Welcome back to building a Spring MVC application using Spring Boot Part 2. Spring Boot is a way to rapidly get started building applications with Spring Boot taking care of most of the plumbing intelligently at the same time giving us the flexibility to add our own implementations or settings if needed. In the Part 1 video, we downloaded and installed Spring Tool Suite. Then we created a simple Spring Boot project. We modified the code to add a simple controller and finally ran the application as an executable jar file. In this part 2 video, we will continue building the Spring MVC application and add the view and model layers to it. For the view layer, we will use Timeleaf. Timeleaf is a template engine which we will use for this demo. However, you can use whichever template engine you like for your view rendering. We will run the application to show the Spring MVC in action and then finally, we will change the packaging directive to make the build a var instead of a jar. You can use this var for deployment on a standard web server. So let's get started. You can either add the time leaf to the dependency at the time when you create the project. So for instance, if we go to new, choose the spring starter project and in the dependencies, choose web and time leaf. We will cancel out of here for now. Since we'll use the second way to add the time leaf dependency to our project, and that is by going to the pom.xml file, choosing dependencies, add dependency, and typing spring boot time leaf, and then choosing it. This will add time leaf to the dependencies. So now it's added to the pom.xml file, and now spring boot is ready to use it. Now, to logically separate the models, views, and controllers, we should create a package for each. First, Let's create a package for the controller. Let's call it controller. Let us create a package now for our domain model classes. Let's call it model. Under the model package, let us create a simple POJO or plain old Java object for the person object. Let us choose new class, call it person and click finish. Let us add some attributes, string first name, string last name and int age. Let us generate getters and setters for them. Let's right click, select source, generate getters and setters check all three and click OK. So the setters and getters are generated. Now let us go to the controller package and create a person controller. So let's click new class, name it person controller and click finish. Let me paste some code over here. We see some red wiggly lines. So let me fix the imports. We put the annotation controller to indicate that it is a controller. Again, we have the request mapping to map the slash person URL to the method person, which returns a string. The return string, instead of being a response body, will be the name of the view, which we have not created yet. The method takes in the model, but it can be overloaded to pass in the request parameters, etc. Inside the method, we create a person object we fill it up with data and add it to the model as attribute person. In a real world application, you might have called a service method which might have gone to the database, fetched the person and returned it back to the controller. But just to keep it simple and illustrate the different pieces, we will just fill the person object over here. The return name person view would refer to a view with the same name. Let us create it next. Let's now go to source, main, resources, Templates. It is important to create the HTML file under the templates folder as time leaf would look for it over there. Right click, go to new, choose web HTML file. Let us name it as person view. The same name we are returning from the controller. So here is our person view.html. Let us first add the time leaf namespace to the HTML tag 
as XML and as TH and put in HTTP www.timeleaf.org. Timeleaf templates are strict and would require us to close the tags. So let us close the meta tag with an end tag. Now let me paste some code in the body. Inside the body, we can refer to the model attributes using the th namespace for timeleaf text and referencing the model with dollar curly braces as we do here for first name, last name, and age. Now let us go back to our demo application.java file. Here, for the component scan, the way it is set up right now, it will only scan the package demo by default. We need it to scan the controller package also to discover the controllers. So let us include it in the add component scan annotation. The way you do it is by using curly braces within parentheses and then adding the package names demo and controller within quotes and separated by comma. Let us remove the controller annotation as we want to move all our controllers out and keep them in the classes in the controller package. Let us move our entry method and default root mapping to separate controllers from the main class. So that's it. Now let's run this app. Let's right click, run as Spring Boot app. So in the console down, we see that our demo application was started successfully. Let us now go to our browser. Let's type HTTP localhost 8080 slash person and we can see the details. So this is a simple demo showing you how you can quickly start with a Spring MVC application with least configuration. If you notice, we did not have to create a single XML file by hand. And the advantage of running it with Spring Boot is that it is a standalone executable jar file which need not be deployed anywhere and is easy to develop and test locally. When you're ready to deploy it on a web server, you can easily create a war by going to your Maven POM file, changing the packaging to a war, and running the Maven packaging task to generate the war. So we go to the project, right click, and then choose the Maven build. Here we type in the package. As you can see, it has generated a war in building war. You can now take this war and deploy it to a standard web server. So in the second video, we continued building our application from the first video and added a view layer using Timeleaf. It is important to note that you have to create it under source main resources templates. That's where Timeleaf looks out for the views. Then we added a model to it. And then finally we created the controller and saw the data return back using that. We also saw the advantage of using the executable jar file which is created by Spring Boot by default which makes testing locally so easy. You don't have to deploy it to any web server. However, when you are ready to deploy it to a web server, it is equally easy to create a war file and deploy it. I thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed watching these two part video series on Spring Boot.